everyone. Thanks for joining us back in House Garen. I hope that you really liked uh, the new intro that I worked really hard on. I've been trying to up the production quality and I spent a ton of time trying to get that good for everyone. So I'm hoping that you all liked it. Wow! Uh, so I've been working hard trying to make all these videos better and um, hopefully uh, that is an improvement. So, we're going to start today's episode, or tonight's episode, I should say, looking kind of around at the situation that is going on in the Reach here. So, as you can see, there are some little bitty wars going on. Looks like Bittis of Cider Hall has already been imprisoned here. You've got Smallwood here attacking Joffrey. And you have got uh, Sir John of New Barrel fighting here in a de jure war. So they're having a little bitty power struggle right here. Um, but what we're actually going to do here is look at the realm tree. So this is our Lord Paramount. So he is the uh, liege lord over all of the reach here. And we're just going to look at the most powerful houses in order to try and determine who might be a suitable ally for us. So, right here, we can see that we have Lord Paxter, the Just of the Arbor. Best friends, like, with Lord Mace of the Reach. But he has a son that is imprisoned by Joffrey. Which is not a good situation to be in. We also have Lord Vortimer, or Vortimer, that's a very interesting name, of Red Lake here. Got yeah, four, 4,400 men, 4,400 men. And his, uh, his son is actually, or was, a part of the Rainbow Guard. Basically, a rainbow, the Rainbow Guard was the guard of Rinley um, when he was fighting over the war. Fighting over the war. Fighting over the war for the Iron Throne in the Clash of Five Kings. And then we have Roderick here, who is us. And we have just under the amount of men that Vortimer has here. So we're in a pretty good spot. I will say Ocean Road might be an interesting choice to try and get an alliance in. Ocean Road would be an interesting choice. But it doesn't look like they're able to. Red Lake might be an interesting choice. But no young sons. So let us see right here. We're going to try for a matrilineal marriage. We have Edric, who is a Baratheon. Strong, but he's 13, so by the time that you get to age, it'll probably be too late. Rickon. That would be interesting marriage. You know what? I think we're going to try for that. So we're going to marry into the Starks. That is a Good plan, definitely. That way we have a connection with the Lord Paramount, which is Lord Edmure the Second. So while we're talking about Edmure, let's just go through the different Lord Paramounts. So right here we have Prince Duran of Dorne. He is infirm, which means that he's basically bedridden. Uh, but he is a great leader. Also... Like, amazing stats, um, amazing intrigue, incredible diplomacy, incredible stewardship. Definitely a great leader. We have Oberyn here. Very well known for being an, uh, an amazing fighter. And very well known for being a uh, man that likes the ladies and the guys. So, yeah, he... Uh, has quite a bit of good traits there. Uh, we might actually want to keep an eye on him. 
because he does a lot of interesting intrigue. He has a lot of plots. This is actually what I found interesting though. Lord Paramount Goodwin of the Stormlands, a Trant. He is the brother of Marin Trant. So this kind of shows you how just because you have a family member in the Kingsguard, you can rise in political power. Um, the Trants of Gallows Grey were never a very powerful family. Um, as you can see, pretty small lordship here. Not even in a very powerful high lordship, um, which basically comprises of these three uh, counties. But they were able to get promoted up because Joffrey is a tyrant and he is a uh, raven so whoever protects him is going to be able to have that power so anyway moving on uh, we already know about Mace not very smart uh, but he does want to see the Tyrell family on the Iron Throne coming over to the Westerlands we see Lord Paramount Tywin, and he has married a Lowborn, which is very interesting. Uh, but he is ruthless, quick, a proud, vicious. Um, so, this is the Tywin that we all know and love to hate. Amazing uh, stats right here as well. The of Balin. Okay. This is very interesting. Wellen, Greyjoy. Aaron. Arian, you're on. Yeah, oh wow, so this is Balin. There's Theon, there's Asha. Uh, I'm not used to him having a mustache like that, but I guess this is the Balon that we see in the books. So, um, he is ruling over the Iron Isles currently with 1,300 men, or 13,000 men, sorry. Uh, we have Euron Crozai, who is at the Red Keep, maybe conspiring with Joffrey over a plan to take back the Iron Isles here. That is an interesting thing. We are actually going to star him as well as star Euron Crozai. You definitely do not want to let people connive behind your back. We'll go ahead and toggle the special interest onto every single Lord Paramount, so we will be updated whenever something interesting happens. And we see that the North is shattered into High Lordships, which is never a good thing when there is a king beyond the wall. King Mance the Handsome. Interesting. Okay. What we see right here, Winterfell owned by the Castell family. Tent, goat fighter, 18 marshal. That seems like a good man to have uh, leading your armies. And we have the leech lord, Lord Roos, here. So we can definitely uh, understand that he is probably going to be really ticked off right now. His whole reason for joining the Lannisters was to have the North and now it's been taken by this little coward and I would not be very surprised if Lord Roos tried to pull something in order to get the Lord Paramount position. We also have Robert of the Vale, uh, Little Robin, what most people would call him, especially those who watch the TV show very sickly, cowardly little boy. But we see that the regent is actually not 
Peter Baelish, it is Lord Alessander of Scorched Vale. Scorched Vale being a very, very, uh, very unimportant, I hate to call it that, but a very small, not very rich province here. Uh, and yet, he has risen to be the regent of the entire Vale. So, that is an interesting position. If we look at Peter Baelish here, we see that he is still over the High Lordship of Harrenhal, which would be right here. Still has the Lordship of Harrenhal located there. And he still has, has the uh, little finger of Midler Point with just over 2,000 men. So, you can kind of understand where the world is right now. And better yet, we can try and figure out how to manipulate them in order to get more power. So let's go ahead and start up time. And we are going through the auto saving. So interesting. So Lord Franklin, the old hawk. Okay. They're probably going to have a war over Prince's Pass here. But the Lord Roderick, to the brave. Lord Roderick, may you live in harmony and contentment. I have decided to accept your suggestion. So, we're going to have Lord Rickon joining us. Once we get married, of course. And what did we say? Euron Crozai has declared Lord Euron host claim on the Iron Isles on his very own brother. We have the Crow's Eye with over 10,000 men. And I wonder who backed him. It was probably the second Mad King here, King Joffrey. Man, things are unveiling themselves, and we're starting to see those armies. So, medium feudal taxes. We really don't want that. We want to keep as much money as possible, so ignore. My lord, after much talk, the most devout has finally selected a new High Septon. His Holiness has renounced any worldly name, and no longer a man but an avatar of the gods. Well, he's envious, but he is zealous, so man's reign be blessed. And right here we see that Mance is not doing too well. But we do have Littlefinger. Really? We do have Littlefinger joining the war against the White Walkers. And Lord Aegon's not doing too well. But he does have the Lord of Winterfell backing him, which makes sense. And Lord Lyman of Derry. A small little 11 year old Riverlander boy was killed, and now been left to a lady who is married to a Frey in a regular marriage, meaning that the Freys will take over Derry. Makes sense, considering what they did to uh, betray the Starks. So, let us see here. If we can try and unite ourselves with the Tullys, would not have it. He does not like us enough. Interesting. Well, we'll have to work on that then. We do not have enough money to bribe him, considering that he is a Lord Paramount. But, ah, uh, that's the only bad thing about having a. The notifications on Joffrey's just gonna go around killing everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. My lord, for some time now I've been an employee of Lord Morin. Okay, Septon. Well, eighteen. Eight. Ah, uh, no thanks. Well, we're good with eight. But I'll tell you what we will do. While we have this open, 
I'm gonna start fabricating claims here on Brightwater Keep. And we will also maybe give Brightwater Keep to Baylor Bright Smile here. A high tower over Brightwater Keep. That would be an awesome thing to see. So, if we are able to fabricate that claim, which I hope we will be able to, then that would be an amazing thing to happen. And, not only that, but we also might look into Horn Hill here. Still a large army here. 4.6 thousand men. 4.4, yeah, definitely more than ours. But that's okay. Looks like Taiwan has been putting down different peasant revolts. And of course we have pirates attacking the arbor, as usual. And it looks like Euron Crozai has taken over the Iron Isles. Backed by Joffrey. We don't know for sure, but pretty sure that he's backed by Joffrey. So that is an interesting development happening. Joffrey trying to rule over all. We have been having some good soldier reinforcements happening, which is always good to hear. Let us see here. 800 men, 68 men, not look too good. Blackwoods are going up to help, as well as Lord Baelish's men. Very interesting. So, I don't think that they need our help to take out the White Walkers now. They should be able to handle that. And of course, Tywin is imprisoning people. Jared Frey, Hung, so many notifications, can't keep up. And it doesn't surprise me, Taiwan is of a brute. It really doesn't surprise me that he's hanging others. We'll do here, see if we can find anyone else that has a better Diplomacy. So, we will go to. Preferably men. No offense, ladies, but we have to have a man for the job. That's just due to the rules of the land. And preferably, we do not want anyone with a great house. None of these would come. Except maybe the master of dusk, but he's a he's the owner. Yeah, no, that wouldn't happen. Master of wyverns? No, no. Really, that is really that is very surprising. Can't find anyone with a better diplomacy. Ah, uh, Amen, but he's dishonorable, cruel, and paranoid. Yeah, you know what, I think we'll stay with our nice little tent and... Euron ah! Crozai accepted defeat and now is imprisoned at Lordsport. Wow. So he was actually defeated. And now Joffrey's scheme to take over the Iron Isles has been put to bed. And fate smiles upon me, my wife Calais is pregnant. Finally! At 21 years old, hopefully she will give us a son. That I'm very much looking forward to. Let us hear. War of Brightwater Independence. How lovely would it be? Oh, wrong button. Go ahead and disband that. How amazing would it be? Just go ahead 
and take Brightwater KP yet again and give it to Brightwater. Not Brightwater. <laughs> the Baylor Bright Spot. Hope that you all are enjoying this gameplay so far. Not a lot has been happening. But we are just slowly trying to edge out to get more land. And it looks like we are out of commanders, so let's find ourselves a commander. Need a skilled fighter, Garth. You will do well. So Garth, you lead the right flank. And we'll just siege this out. Might actually have to undo that as well. Because he's going to be imprisoning who knows who. And here we go. The great game has begun. Lord Paramount Edmure the Second of the Trident has declared Riverman War for Edric's claim on the Iron Throne. And he's declared it on King Joffrey the Monster. We'll consider ourselves neutral. And it looks that we have a weak son, Erel Garen. We will name him... <coughs> we will name him a weak person. We will name him... Interesting. We will name him... Reek. No, we won't be mean. We won't be that mean. We will name him... Uh, uh, Gerald. And we finally had a son. So it's time to pick a new ambition. And I think that ambition should be... To fall in love. We do have the option to hold attorney. Let's try and get someone better at diplomacy. So that would be a man good with words. We lose a gold. We get Emin. Who is awful. Disappointed! Vanishing without a trace. Sorry, Emin. Did not mean to kill you, but apparently that's what I did. It looks like we cannot wage war on him yet. What we can do... Oh, because we were neutral before. Can do that. So we're gonna go join for now. And we're gonna try and siege out Brightwater Keep here. And my wife wants um more clothes, better shoes, and fine dresses. Oh uh, okay, I'm gonna pay for it. Simply because we need to get Another son. Our first one was weak. We're going to be teaming up with the Lannisters here, unfortunately, to try and take out the Brightwater men. I hate that we're going to have to team up with them, but sometimes the road to power is a dark one. And at least we'll get some gold to make up for having to spend that 25 gold on Fertility cost, basically. And let's see if we get anything. 12 gold. I'll take it. And maybe once we capture this, Joffrey will give us the bright water keep that we so desire. That was a blood curdling scream. And 
and wow we have Edric Storm becoming the new king of the Iron Throne I never would have expected that but it looks like we are going to have a new king here wants us to be a commander. For now, we will go ahead that there. It looks like you're on trading. But we are going to have to leave it there. We have a new king in Edric Storm. He is a strong guild fighter, and although he is a kinslayer, a chaste, kind, and charitable man, though, we have the heir being Lady Shireen, which is interesting because we're seeing the Baratheons back in power, which is something that I did not think was going to happen. But this has been a very informative video. I don't know if it's been very action-packed, but I hope that everyone's enjoyed it. And next time we will get into more of this war over Brightwater Keep and try and get this land for House Hightower. We kind of took over their land by taking Old Town as our starting position. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and have a great one. Thanks.